So I recently just got an invite to Dolly and Dolly is very simply an AI program that allows you to put it in a sentence and it's gonna output an image. You can define what type of image if you want, if you want it like be a 3D graphic or a photo or a painting. You can even define the style. Uh, so we're gonna look at some examples here. It's pretty cool. I did it with my class and how this works is you sign up, you get put on a waiting list. You get 50 credits when you get in there and every image you run is a credit. It's going to generate four images based off of your initial sentence. And you can refine and go back and do different things, but every time you do that, it costs a credit. Let's go take a look and see what some of the examples here are, what they look like, and how they work. Uh, so here on the, the, the Dolly app itself, you can go over into the top right-hand corner and click on that. And this is going to give you all of the history that you have so far. You have lots of options here. You can see that I've done a lot. Uh, my first class here got a little funky and decided to go with... Uh, a really crazy sentence that Dolly did a decent job with. Uh, so they had an elephant riding a bike over a lava on a tropical island during winter. Uh, we can see really clearly here that we did a good job of capturing the riding of a bike with the elephant. Awesome, no problem. Lava, questionable. Uh, winter, more questionable. Tropical island, we got. Uh, all of these pictures have tropical islands. This one puts snow on the top of a tropical island it works. Uh, didn't get the bike, but it has a bicycle rider riding the elephant. So, okay. Uh, we look here. Uh, the bike is kind of part of the elephant, but it works. Uh, we have that, and then we have this one here. So, that's all well and good. Uh, we have, uh, you can go in and say just pixel art of an F1 car winning a, winning a race. Boom. It's perfect. These are all excellent examples of pixel art and of an F1 car. You get it instantly of what it's supposed to be. Then we got a little funny. Now we have Teletubbies fighting Elmo. Neither of these setups are Teletubbies or Elmo, but they all are fighting. Uh, and the facial expressions these things generate just make me laugh. Uh, if we go in a little bit more here, uh, we have Albert Einstein playing Fortnite on a PC. This thing has no idea what Fortnite is, but it does know who Albert Einstein is, and it does know what it looks like to play on a PC, so that's what we got. Uh, if we would go up a little bit more, uh, we have a flat graphic, uh, I, I particularly love flat stuff, of a red moon in deep space. And I think it killed this. These just look beautiful. They're great, they're, they're clear, they're well done. Uh, it fits the aesthetic of flat graphics really well, and it just looks really, really nice here. Scrolling up a little bit further, we have an uh, anime of Darth Vader fighting Captain Kirk, because why not? And uh, we can see that this thing had no idea who Captain Kirk was. I probably should have gone with Star Trek or something like that. And even a little bit more beyond that, uh, Darth Vader is questionable if that's actually who that is there. Uh, but we can see uh, that actually looks more like Luke than Captain Kirk. Whatever. If we go up a little bit more, we have a high quality photo of a classroom with ants at the desk. This originally was going to be like the ants were the students, but it did exactly what I said, ants are at the desk and it's a high quality photo. When you zoom in on these, you can see that this is clearly not an ant, it's just a shape that looks like it, but it works, especially when they're a little smaller. These again are not ants, they're not high quality as far as like the actual detail of that. But when we look at it uh, in a hole here uh, and we go back you can see these look like ants, it's pretty good. We went then down uh, Captain America for a little while of, uh, in the style of Mona Lisa. I don't think any of these are necessarily in the style of Mona Lisa, but the quality of the pictures are just really, really nice. I like them a lot. We then, going back to silliness, uh, we have George Washington fighting the Queen of England in a fist fight. Uh, these all look like they're holding hands, except for this one where the Queen <laughs> brings out a knife to the fight. So we have that, but uh, we go here and George Washington is terrifying looking in this picture. If we scroll up a little more, we have a high quality photo of a robot drawing a blueprint. Now these are all blueprints or close to blueprints of a robot, but the general idea is there. And this looks like it was actually drawn by somebody. Again, this is all computer generated. Nobody actually drew this. Uh, I then went into isometric town because I love isometric graphics as well. Uh, and then did isometric of a 3D printer. These are really good. I mean, look at the detail here. It even has like the track stuff that a lot of uh, 3D printers, including the one over to my right here has. Uh, it, it just did a really good job with these. It got the print head down, got the beds, all that stuff. It did a really nice job. 
Uh, we then went into more isometrics. I did a lot of F1 cars because that's fun. And these all look good from a distance. When you blow them up, you can see that there's not as precise as what you would think an isometric drawing technically would be, like you see in games and stuff, but that's okay. Again, the point here is that we took a sentence and turned it into an image with no real work on our end other than thinking of a sentence. Uh, we then got a little more complex. We did a 3D render of a World War II aircraft carrier made out of Lego. Uh, from afar, they look like they're made out of Lego when you zoom in. They're definitely not, but from afar, it works really well uh, to capture what's going on. We then have an expressive oil painting of a portrait of Mr. Beast with fireworks in the background. This thing has no idea who Mr. Beast is, even though the rest of the internet does, but it did everything else exactly right. We had a painting of cheese eating a rat. My kids wanted to go crazy with this, so uh, we don't have anything here, but look at this. I mean, it looks like it was like pencil drawn. There's really high quality in there. I, I just, I'm absolutely astounded by this every time. Again, we have rats eating cheese. This one, we have a rat eating cheese, but this rat here is also appearing to be eaten by the cheese itself. Look at that face, man. All right, then we went in, uh, we have a uh, monkey of uh, flying over Paris in 3D render. Uh, we have some pixelated stuff of kids playing video games, and then we went down sad robot town. So we start off with an expressive uh, painting of a robot talking on a phone in a forest. Then we go with a lonely robot at an abandoned amusement park, as one does. And these are, I mean, look at this. This is excellent. I just, I can't get over how good these are. So they're really, really nice, well done. Uh, then we go into more sad robots. This is a sad robot in an empty city. Uh, we didn't say what type of kind of picture we wanted here, so these all are uh, kind of stylized and nice. Uh, we then go into a sad robot of a 3D render here. Uh, apparently, the universal sign for sad is your head's down. Uh, even in robot world, they do have feelings and they do feel sadness. <laughs> this one's just giving up. Look at them. They even have a little motion blur in here. I, I, it's just cool. Scrolling up a little further here, we have uh, we have a tree fighting armored ants with swords. Uh, we did not really get a lot of what we asked for in that one. We got trees and ants. Um, this one looks like it might be a sword there, but that's about it for that one. And uh, yeah, we can see that there's, looks like there's a fight going on. These ants are fighting each other, but not what we asked for, and that's okay. Um, one of the cool things about this is you learn how to start asking it better questions and narrowing down your choices. So if I have more credits, which I'm going to buy, uh, but once you have more choices, you can go in and start kind of knocking down and really sussing out what you need and what you don't need as far as a phrasing so that the computer can figure out exactly what you want. Uh, we have Walter White here. This is an expressive painting of Walter White in a desert. I think this one knocked it out of the park. That one's not as much Walter White, but you can see that the general idea is pretty good there. Uh, if we go back up further here, we have Gandalf and Groot battling aliens uh, in the style of Starry Night. Uh, so it didn't know who Groot was. Gandalf, it, it got. I mean, that's definitely Gandalf. Groot is a little terrifying in most of these. Uh, but we have the general idea of what's going on, and I really dig uh, some of these ones here. Uh, and then uh, we had uh, some, my, my kid was being a little bit of a pain today, so we did a painting of a child arguing with his mom. All of those, boom, nailed them. And then the last one we have here is stained glass of a photo of a martial arts studio. Uh, and these, are, these aren't real. These are entirely computer generated. They look real. They are just killer. I'm really happy with these. The stained glass ones come out really well. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take a phrase or a sentence, um, we're just gonna make it about this video, we're gonna throw it in there and see what it generates. And I'll show you how fast it generates these images because if I were to try to make this image, it'd be faster for me to actually make this real thing and then take a picture of it as opposed to Photoshopping it or do something like that. I'm just not that quick with this stuff. Physically making it would be way faster for me. Uh, but we'll see that dolly here when we go in. I'm just gonna type in a sentence here and we'll see what happens. Uh, so we're going to do a vibrant graphic, uh, I just want there to be lots of color, because I might use it for a thumbnail, of a studio recording technology videos with multiple cameras and lights. So we're just going to hit generate. It's going to take like 10 to 30 seconds, it's usually pretty quick, it just depends on kind of the complexity that you ask for. But it's going to go through and generate that image, and you can see that it's moving through, and while it's doing it, it gives you different examples that came out really well. I love that cheeseburger one. But here we go. So we have uh, our stuff here, a vibrant graphic. None of these are really graphic in that sense, uh, but we have uh, this one here. Uh, I don't see multiple cameras, but we do have what looks like a studio. Here's another studio with tons of uh, cameras. We have three cameras and looks like many lights. 
Uh, if we go back to this one, this one, again, looks like a studio. It, it has that feel to it. And over here, we actually even have somebody presenting uh, somewhere off screen probably. You can see that without me having to do hardly any work, we we're able to generate images, high quality images, and we can go back and play with them. Now, there's a lot of stuff you can do with this. You can go back and edit further. You can help teach it. You can do a lot of different things. So, so what does this all mean? Because Dolly's really cool, but what does it mean? Right now, I don't think it means much. This is all theoretically academic in the main sense. We're teaching computers how to think and do things, but what they're doing is hit or miss for the most part, and the quality and kind of the end result is okay. There are other versions out there that do different things really well. Some of them focus on making realistic photos. Some of them do it on paintings. There's all kinds of different stuff out there. But as far as a concern that AI is learning and doing things, not really here. This is uh, the beginning stages of that, but we're at the point now where we're just kind of in the academic fun sense. We're going through and just uh, seeing what stupid things we can come up with and what the computer is going to spit out. Eventually, we're going to get to a point where the computer is going to spit out amazing things and stuff that we're not going to be able to touch, and that's going to be an interesting day. Uh, but that's where I'm going to leave this video. Uh, I'll leave a link down for Dolly if you're interested, and uh, let me know if you come up with any cool phrases that we can try out. I'll see you in our next video.